Colts Nation introducing you to your new defensive line coach, Nate Ali. You spent last season with the Jets, the previous two seasons with the Eagles. You were a standout at Ball State in your own playing career, spent a few seasons there as a graduate assistant. But this opportunity, not only to return to the Midwest with your ties, of course, to Indiana, but also being a Chicago native, what was most appealing about an opportunity to coach within this Gus Bradley defense? Just Gus Bradley, just a great person. Like, if you meet him, like his energy is positive. I heard nothing but just great things about him. And, just me, and then us has been able to implement this new style of attacking. It's coming off the ball and attacking. And, and we talk, we telling the guys to take their seatbelt off. And we're just going on the defensive line. And that, to me, that was exciting. Just first as Gus Bradley as a person, right, great person. Then after that, just being able to implement this style uh, of defense. How does this style play to the strengths of the guys that you have returning? You mentioned attacking. You have speed. You have strength across that defensive line with guys like DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart, and then you have young guys who are developing like Quiddy Pay and Dio Dangbo. It does a great job for them. It, it takes the thinking out for the defensive line. All right, you just tell those guys, I'm taking my seatbelt off, and basically you just a train on your track. Right? I'm a train on my track, and anybody comes in my way, they get messed up. So just kind of taking that seatbelt off and those guys, just be getting those guys going, just flying up the field. And because the game is changing, right? The game is changing. We got to be able to sack Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Ryan Tannehill. We got to be able to sack those guys. So what's better to do is tell those guys, get off the ball and let's go. We're going to stop the run on the way to the quarterback. I know you guys have spent a lot of time studying the personnel, installing the playbook and preparation for the OTA period. But last year, the top two draft picks, Quiddy Pay, Dio Adengbo, you go to guys on the edge. Typically, it takes guys who are pass rushers maybe two, three, four seasons to really achieve their potential. As a coach, what do you implement day in and day out to help those guys make that leap in their second year? Also guys behind them too, like Ben Banigou, who continues to develop. Number one thing you talk about the guys has been able to just get off on the ball, right? You talk about get off. And then two, you want to break everything down, right? Because sometimes, like in college and those guys, you're just so much better than a guy. You just work with speed and run right past them. So you want to break it down. You want to be able to talk about how using your hands. And you talk about how to get in the offense alignment out of the perfect body position. So you talk about that's the stimulus and that's response. So if he's shooting his hands, like if he's shooting his hands out right here, right, I want to swipe, right? He got his hands low, I want to work my cross shot. But it's basically breaking down the pass rush for those guys and showing those guys that it's really a chess match, right? What I'm going to do to set up my move, right? It's kind of like same thing like I'm a pitcher, right? I got my fastball. I got my fastball, fastball. Boom, now I come in with my curveball. So just teaching those guys those things and breaking it down to them. Who have been your greatest coaching influences that instilled that in you that you're not ca now carrying into your own coaching. Uh One of my greatest coaches is actually he's the defensive coordinator at uh, Indiana University, uh, Chad Wilt. Like he coached me at Ball State. He's one of the reasons why I got into coaching. That is fantastic. Well, this group of coaches, you guys have been together for a few weeks now, getting into the building, installing the system. You just came off of the combine. You're studying free agency, studying the draft, preparing all of those things. You mentioned Gus and the personality, the energy, the dynamic that he brings in. How are the rest of these coaches uh, assimilating? How are you guys all getting used to each other? What's the dynamic that you're building, working with one another and getting comfortable now building this defense? Oh, it's doing good. I was meeting with guys like Rich, Milo, uh, Mike, Cato, uh, Rach, like just meeting with those guys. And just like, it's just like a family. Like we all in there, we talking. Like I just went out to eat with like Cato the other day, just really trying to, right now, we're just trying to just build that, that bond and getting to know each other. Like me and, me and uh, Matt, we would just sit back and just kind of how, how we want to call terms, how we want to do this, what we want to what we want to keep, right? What are these guys, you know, because I don't want to come in and just change everything on the defensive line of terms. Okay, what are these guys are used to? What terms can we keep? What terms can we, you know, all right, we don't need that. So it's been going good just being with those guys. But first we were starting off just bonding and getting to know each other. With that, how important is the upcoming OTA mini camp period with getting the group of guys that you're inheriting up to speed with this new scheme so that come training camp, start of the season, this is a group that's ready to fly around, be fast, be physical, and start the season aggressively? Yeah, first is just want to come there when we get in there to start to build a relationship with the guys. I think once you build a relationship, all the rest of this, it'll come, right? I want to get to know these guys. I want them to get to know me. Know no, I want to know how many kids you got, your wife name, when the birthday, something like that. I want to, got like a sheet I got that I want these guys to fill out. I want to get to know these guys. And after that, and then we can get on the, because it is different, right? This is a different style that they're going to be used to. We're talking about really, when I say take your seatbelt, you are taking your seatbelt off, you are coming off the ball. 
So it is different. And then once we get to know them and I build a relationship and we get here to get the rolling, this thing's going to get the humming. Hey, talking about the personal side, getting to know your personal side, you're not the only one within your household who has been a member <laughs> of the Horseshoe. Your wife, Ambria, multiple seasons yeah. as a Colts cheerleader, including Pro Bowl cheerleader in 2020. How exciting is this for you, for your family, with the ties you have here to the Colts organization? Oh, uh, it, it was great to just come back here. Basically, like, Andy's like my second home. Like, I got married right at Regents Tower uh, down here and just being able to, me and my wife, to come back home so you can be hurt with her family, me closer to Chicago. Like I told her when we came up here on the interview, I said, I am not coming back. Like, when I, when I, no disrespect to the Jets, but I said, when I'm going back to the Jets, it's to clean out my office. Like, we are getting this job. And uh, this, it was just good. It was just good to be close to family. Hey, welcome home. It is yeah. great to have you. So excited to see you get to work with this defense. Thank you.